So, uh, hi, I'm Michael. Um, I'm on the membership working group since uh, 2016 and I wanted to do a presentation um, not only about the membership working group but uh, about the system of the working groups uh, in general on the OSMF. Uh, so I'll start by introducing what, the, what is a working group. I'll uh, then tell a bit more about the working group. I, I know uh, about my experiences, uh, activities, what we did uh, in about the last uh, year. Um, we had uh, an incident which was uh, quite widely uh, known, which uh, Guillaume will tell you a bit more about it. And uh, of course, in the end, we will like to motivate you to participate in our awesome working group or in some other uh, OpenStreetMap uh, Map Foundation working group. So I've, I hope most of you know what the OpenStreetMap Foundation is. Um, the OpenStreetMap Foundation is just this uh, tiny little dot in the huge uh, OpenStreetMap community, which is embedded in the even larger uh, OpenStreetMap um, uh, global movement uh, with all the uh, consumers of our data. Um, the OpenStreetMap Foundation uh, holds the, um, the trademark, they own the servers, they keep the servers running uh, for, for mapping, for um, our activities. Uh, next to the OSMF we also have uh, lots of other small groups which are uh, organized as associations like the, the local chapters or special interest groups and uh, so the OSMF um, is is a necessity. Uh, it's there um, to support the OpenStreetMap project but it is not like controlling the OpenStreetMap uh, project. Inside the um, OpenStreetMap Foundation, we have uh, the board. Um, and apart from the board, there are the working groups, which are doing kind of the, uh, the, the work, the real work that is done. Um, it's all volunteer driven, so uh, almost nobody gets paid. Um, It's, um, it's a construct to, to organize the effort uh, to get together all the different uh, volunteers around one specific aspect. Um, we also need this uh, formalization to get uh, some access control. So you get special, um, yeah, special access like uh, to the membership register if you're in the membership working group and of course you have to sign some paperwork which says what you can do and what you can't do with uh, your special access. Um, but like the, the conclusion of all this is if nobody wants to do it, it doesn't get done because we are not employees. The, the board cannot tell us really what to do do because, well, we can just move on and uh, of course there is uh, some feeling of obligation but you will also see that oftentimes uh, things can take very long until they are done in the working groups. So uh, as an example, the membership working groups What's our duties? Well, we tend to the register, obviously. Uh, that means we answer routine questions like, uh, is, is my membership still valid? Or um, uh, could I change my address? Can you update my email address? Uh, we also uh, support the voting by telling the votes and uh, we try to grow the membership. Um, I talked about access, of course we get access to the membership register with uh, all the details. We get power to, uh, re to do renewals, to add and remove uh, members. And for that we of course uh, need to sign this uh, non-disclosure agreement. There are a lot of other working groups. 
um, we have the operations working group. I said uh, OSMF is running the servers. Those are the uh, great guys who look after the servers and make that uh, everything is running smoothly that we can map at any hour of the day. Um, we just had a presentation uh, from someone from the licensing working group. Um, there's the data working group uh, which is f uh, for vandalism and similar topics. Um, we have an engineering working group. We have a communication working group. Um, and of course, uh, without them we wouldn't be here, the state of the map organizing committee. Um, how does the membership working group work? So I joined in 2016. Um, I was told by then that the group was restarted for the third time, so that's kind of a risk that it all fizzles out, that uh, all the um, people uh, that were on, on the working group just yeah, walked away. Um, I got some introduction to CVCRM, which is the uh, open software we use for the register. I got the introduction by the board members because what the working groups don't do, that falls back onto the board members somehow. Um, and uh, yeah, I just learned to answer some of the questions. Um, but good to know for the um, for signing up, so when you renew your membership, this is um, fully automatic with PayPal, so there we have not so much to do, that's great. Um, we also administer the OSMF Talk mailing list, which is for uh, OSMF members only, so we can subscribe uh, people who want to be on that uh, mailing list. Um, and of course we do have uh, regular, or more or less regular meetings, um, we uh, meet online and uh, discuss uh, certain topics, problems we have, and how we can do better uh, in the future, uh, new things. Oops. Oh, sorry. Um, what we did about in the last year, um, we had some uh, long-standing mail problems. Um, you get some reminder mails when you need to renew your membership because, well, it's once a year, it's easily to forget, but really badly it uh, turns out some of those mails were not sent out. We had quite a long time to track that error down, but quite persistent. Um, but yeah, we were luckily able to fix it with some uh, external help. Um, we were also writing down procedures. Like I said, uh, in the beginning I was uh, taught by someone from the board how to do all these things. It wasn't written down, so now we have at least uh, a little bit of introduction for new members of the membership working groups, how, how to operate. It's not that much, but it's good when it's uh, written down. We introduced OTRS for handling uh, our day-to-day -day tasks. Um, we, um, we got a lot more to do when we introduced the fee waiver program. Uh, we all needed to look at all the, the applicants and that just didn't work out anymore like we operated before with just mailing stuff around like, yeah, I'll, I'll answer that uh, and uh, oh, I have answered this and does somebody know that and now we have this um, this software for support requests it uh, originally. Other working groups were already using it, so it was uh, quite easy for us to pick it back on that and also use that software. Um, we improved the membership working group page, which was practically empty before. Uh, now we have at least a little bit of text. And uh, the, we got the fee waiver program. Uh, more on that. Um, that's actually quite an old thing. It was from 2014 uh, resolution, which was then accepted by the uh, members of the OSMF. 
and it was the task of the membership working group to make some procedures uh, around them. Um, the fee waiver program says we can accept members without paying the usual membership fee uh, if they have um, no option to pay because lack of banking facilities or if it's just an uh, unreasonable financial burden because 15 pounds can be uh, a lot of money in certain parts of the world. And we had some things uh, already in place, like we have the list for where PayPal is not available, that's a sure thing that they, yeah, they just don't have it available to uh, be a member that easily. Um, we had a form for people to apply for the fee waiver, but we were really stuck uh, for years on some other things like uh, the fee waiver says the person had to contribute something else of value to the OSMF and that's a really soft condition and very hard to uh, see it uh, objectively, to, to test it objectively and also uh, to have a rule for uh, financial hardship. How can we define if 15 pounds for that particular person is enough or not? Um, so before the elections in 2018, someone insisted on being ac accepted under the fee waiver program, which kind of put us uh, in uh, higher gear. So we had to be, uh, hurriedly roll that out with the help of the board. Um, we finalized the money transfer case. Um, we selected for the um, something else of value, the same as we have in the act, uh, active contributor clause in our contribution uh, guidelines, which um, just says you have to uh, con have contributed in three different months in the last year uh, to be regarded as an active contributor. And for the other uh, financial hardship case, we rely on the board to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so I hand over to Guillaume. Thank you. Um, so one big thing we had on the membership working group last year was um, just before the board election, um, there was this big, big wave of new users and uh, there were all associate members. Just quick show of hands, who's an OSMF member? Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, join us. Um, so as, as most of you apparently know, we have two kinds of membership, associate and, oh dear. What's the other one? Normal members. Normal, normal members, thank you. Uh, I should know this. And uh, all of them were associate members. All of them um, had Gmail email addresses. Sorry, all of them had Gmail addresses. All of them were from India. And uh, the IP addresses of those accounts were associated with one company. So um, I saw this, it was a pure coincidence that I saw this. It was just before the election and uh, the French community had had a great campaign to, hey, we are underrepresented in the USMF, uh, we should do something about it, and lots of them signed up. So I was wondering, are other countries underrepresented? Can we check? And I found out that there was a one country that was highly overrepresented, and that it was very fresh. So I notified the board. The board decided that there's a, when you sign up as a member, there are seven days uh, where the foundation can reject your membership. So I asked the board, "Hey, should we reject these and, and see what's up?" The board um, did not reject the memberships. Then I notified the other candidates and said, hey, should we, should we talk to the board? And we, five of, us of the candidates for the board sent uh, a, a letter to the board. And, um, and then it turned out that those people, they thought they had signed up just in time to vote for the election. There's a cutoff date of 30 days before the election. Uh, the, where, where you have to be a member so that you can vote and they signed up just after because of a misunderstanding that I thought it was the day after. So it turns out they couldn't vote 
Um, and so after the election, uh, the membership working group um, decided to investigate and uh, we produced a report and it's, it's yeah, 22 pages, sorry. Um, who, who's read it, show of hands? Of course you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so it's quite long. Um, and we concluded that it was an uh, orchestrated campaign by one company, um, that the company was not being truthful, that there were several contradiction and things that just didn't make sense in, in what we were being told. And we uh, concluded that it was probably aimed at influencing the election. How? We don't know. Who was behind it? We don't know. Um, I'm not going to go through the 22 pages. You can, if you have trouble falling asleep, you can read them. But I'm going to go through the, the key evidence. Um, so one thing we were really lucky to have is we had a um, control group. Like when you, when you decide if a medicine is good or not, you have a control group that gets the placebo. And so we were really lucky. We had about 100 French people sign up in the last few days. And uh, they were showing very different patterns. And the French group understood the deadline correctly, and the Indian group didn't. But I made the same mistake. But also, it was a lot more concentrated in one big wave. And the French group, it took a few email and a few tweets and everything to uh, encourage people to join. And it was a lot more spread out. So that was quite different. And then uh, we thought, you know, why don't we contact them? So we wrote an email to all of them. Welcome to the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Um, a lot of you have joined. Um, and uh, what happened and what made you decide to and so on. And uh, we sent the same email in French and in English to the two groups. And the response we got was quite different. The French group replied very quickly and had suggestions and they all had very different messages. Some of them were one-liners, others were like pages. Um, and the Indian group, they, they trickled in at one per day after a week and they all looked pretty similar. Some of them even used the same words. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Friedel, who um, co-wrote the report with me, we were laughing because an email came in and we were betting on whether it would have the word mandatory in it. It did. Um, another thing we found is that many people signed up writing the name in lowercase. And you have one of them, that's normal, that's not nothing. But there we had all of a sudden 21 people working at the same company entering their um, the names in lowercase, and uh, we compared that with the um, with the, um, we thought it might be a cultural thing. So we compared with um, with um, other Indian members of the USMF. We find that they were just like everyone else, entering a mix of uppercase and lowercase, but mostly with the first letter in uppercase. Um, so we concluded that this was almost certainly someone uh, typing in the names from a list, doing all the memberships one by one. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was complete luck that we had these control groups that we were able to find that evidence that we saw the problem was there in the first place. And um, complete luck that there was a misunderstanding in the deadline. Um, but what happened next, so we wrote that report and then um, sent it out to the board and then to everyone. Um, at MWG, we, we tighten the procedures. We now check when you enter a username. Um, we check it's a valid OpenStreetMap username. We ask for the employer. We have reports coming out. Uh, when, when you become a member, uh, MWG will get a, 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 an alert. Because before that, we had no idea what was happening in CVCRM. If you don't go to check, you don't see anything. Now we get reports and all other kinds of stuff which um, help us have a, a better idea of what's happening. Um, and then the board contacted um, Global Logic to discuss this. And um, in the end, we got um, a list of employees, and um, Global Logic agreed to 
cancel, I think was the verb used to cancel the memberships. And um, we took that list, we compared that with our list, contacted the people. And five of them asked, uh, you know, I'd like to stay. So we let them stay and every other membership um, has been canceled. Um, but there's also stuff that's going to happen next. We're going to keep improving the, the procedures, the checks, the, um, the, um, ent the data you enter when you become a member. Um, we are going to um, do more, more reporting so we can keep a better eye. We're going to validate the email addresses maybe. And we thought maybe have a checkbox that says my employer is paying for my membership. Things like that. We don't have all ideas. So if you have ideas, raise your hand after the talk. And um, we are also uh, with the board talking uh, about changing, updating the articles of association. Joost and I shared ice cream the other day discussing that. Um, for example, um, the, the, the delay, the seven day delay to cancel a membership um, is uh, quite short actually to, to have a look at what's happening. Um, so to, to lengthen that uh, to, to 30 days, I think. Um, to give us a better chance of reacting, uh, things like that. So the articles of association um, are being looked at. And um, something that um, we should discuss as a community is what, uh, what is a member and how, how do you define membership? Is it enough to just pay a membership fee? Or some, some other communities, for example, OSGO and HOT, have a requirement that you have to be invited to become a voting member. Um, and um, another group, the, the Document Foundation, the people doing uh, LibreOffice, they have a requirement that to um, become a voting member, you have to have, um, they call it skin in the game. You have to have uh, a certain contribution to qualify as a voting member. And I like that more than having a group that's by invitation, because anyone can map their way into the voting members, and it, it limits the um, people involved in taking the decisions to people who really are involved in the process. How do we define skin in the game? Is it number of edits? Some people do great stuff on OpenStreetMap, but don't edit a lot, so we have to find flexible ways. But I, I think that's a conversation that would be interesting to have. Uh, that's it from me. Over to you. Yeah, I think we're open for questions now. We have more slides. Uh, oh. Uh, let's have, oh. Let, let's have the, could we have all the questions at the end? Thank you. Okay, so sh should I do the, the outlook? So uh, I, I think most of it, um, Guillaume has already uh, said from the uh, perspective of that, the, the, the membership. Um, so to, to grow the membership, we want to improve the uh, membership fee waiver program. Uh, as I said, uh, it's not really finished. It's, it's a very manual process for the uh, financial hardship case. Um, and OK, that's the point where I have to say we uh, are very open to people who are interested in these topics to come join us. Um, you don't have to join formally to work on any of these topics. You can just contribute as you like. You can become a formal member of the membership working group, however you like. Um, other things we want to is uh, publish regularly updated uh, statistics. That's also um, for the uh, general public to see um, fluctuations and uh, yeah, j just strange things, pick, pick them up. Um, we have the point of growing the membership. Uh, if you have paid attention, you, we have done really nothing uh, about that. There was uh, one effort uh, of a membership drive, which was uh, spearheaded by the communications working group, I think. So uh, just put an ad on the uh, OSM main page, uh, hey, you should become a member of the OSMF. But apart from that, that's really a broad topic. Topic we would, would be awesome if people would uh, work on that. Um, 
we want to do a membership self-service area. Uh, people are a mm, little bit uncomfortable that like, um, yeah, now I'm, I'm a member, but uh, I don't have a login or anything. So you can't even see uh, for yourself that you're, what, what the status of your membership is. That would be, would be awesome for the feedback. And um, we want to have a, a badge on the OpenStreetMap.org main page because that's also uh, sometimes a request now. Uh, I'm a member of the OSMF. Hey, I want to show or, or I want to um, prove to the world that I am a member of the OSMF, which we can't do at the moment as well. So. Please join, yeah. <laughs> Please join. You can work on anything um, that you find interesting in our list. We think that uh, if you want to be on the membership working group, it would be great if you have at least one day a month time because uh, these things just take time. It uh, will fizzle out if, if you um, yeah, don't reserve a little bit of time for it. Um, to get access, of course, to the membership register and so on, you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but you can also work on certain toppings where you don't need access. Oh, sorry, um, we are over time. Um, and um, yeah, just work out of your own initiative. That would be great. Thanks. Do we have time for questions? That's why I stopped you just one second. So, I, I know, I, don't, I haven't forgotten about you, don't worry. Don't worry. No, that's for later. Um, so these guys have done an incredible job this year, and that's important, but I think they need some help. I think they said there's some, there's some technology issues there. We're a super smart community. I think that could help. Um, reading all of the fee waivers as board members, we have to read all of those, right? And you guys did that manually before. So there's a lot of processes that you've documented, which is really important. So I always make a plea to have people join working groups if you can to help support. But we have um, time for about two questions and then we're gonna do the group photo. Oh, Dermot, you're gonna make me run upstairs. Well, I promised aerobics. Just, I'll, I'll be quick about this one, but uh, it concerns the, the I suppose, uh, Michael, you were saying, t talking about what it is that we think membership is. One of the questions that we often hear within the community is why be a member? And I think it's worth reflecting, Guillaume, you gave us a very good answer to that because with a relatively small membership of the foundation relative to the number of mappers, it does leave these important decisions, whether or not people choose to join the foundation, they are effectively bound by decisions made by the foundation. So the actual makeup of the board and decisions that get made within the board of the foundation, the best way to resist this kind of manipulation is by, is by joining. And I think it's probably just everyone should have that as a takeaway of, of, of what we heard today. Uh, absolutely. The, the, it's the best defense, as you said. It's also important that we get um, broad representation uh, to um, get more good ideas and also be, um, it, it's difficult when a small group takes decision that affect a lot of people. So the more we are, the, the better it is. Yeah, I, I plus one on the plea to join OpenStreetMap Foundation and to do that in a, in a positive way. But I also think we joined Open Source Initiative this year, right? There are other people who have open organizations who do membership. So what can we learn from them in terms of best practices? And if we need to change our model, that's really up to the, what a member is, that's up to the membership working group to do it. The board is taking recommendations from the working groups. That's how the power dynamic works here. So if you want to affect change, that's got to be happening, helping support these gentlemen that are working on it and other folks in the group. One last question before we do photos. I know you all want to take photos. Simon. I don't even have to know. I memorized where you were sitting. <laughs> Very quick, Simon, okay? The question, the question's quick, I don't know whether the answer is quick. In the end, after this incident, do you have any idea what the motivation was and what they expected to achieve? Because that's the big mystery. It doesn't really make sense, as far as I can tell. I would love to know. I, I've kind of accepted I'm never going to know. Steve is still like, oh, oh what do you think? Um, Talk to me outside if you have an idea. I don't know if we should do conspiracy theories. What I would really like to do, though, yeah, yeah. is solve problems. And I think you guys' this process-oriented approach 
teaches us how we can actually prepare and plan and mitigate. Uh, I think in the end, it, it doesn't matter what was behind it. What matters is that it was um, detected and it was uh, dealt with. And if you go to the Wikipedia page of Global Logic, you're going to see a section on OpenStreetMap. And so it's really bad for your reputation to mess with OpenStreetMap. Don't do it. Honestly, everyone's a member. Be a, be a good member. Is what, I think that that's the summary. Right? Be a good member. Whoever you are, yeah. be a good member of OpenStreetMap. Yeah.